Hey, movie fans, let's take a trip back to a classic movie from 1969. It's a film full of ups and downs, surprises, and touching moments. This movie has stuck around for a long time, and there's something special about it that keeps drawing people in, even after all these years. Do you have any special memories connected to this film? Maybe you watched it late at night with friends, or maybe you enjoyed it all by yourself with a big bowl of popcorn. Share your stories with us, we'd love to hear them. As we explore this movie, keep in mind all the funny, surprising, and emotional moments that unfold. It's more than just a movie, it's an experience. What's your favorite memory of this film? Share it with us. Now let's press play and relive the moments that have made this movie a legend. A groundbreaking movie from 1969 left a lasting mark on popular culture, resonating with audiences, and pushing the boundaries of storytelling in cinema. It was well received, clinching three Academy Awards and earning critical acclaim for its honest portrayal of urban life and themes of loneliness and friendship. This movie didn't just entertain, it changed the landscape of filmmaking. Its gritty depiction of New York City influenced many filmmakers, setting a new standard for realism on screen. Moreover, this movie's success spawned adaptations and spin-offs, inspiring a stage version and a novelization of the screenplay. Its memorable characters and quotes became part of pop culture, with merchandise and references echoing its impact. Even today, the influence of this movie can be seen in how films tackle deep themes and portray city life realistically. Three Oscar winners, including Dustin Hoffman, John Voight, and Paul Jabara, along with three Oscar nominees, Sylvia Miles, Brenda Vaccaro, and Bob Balaban, comprise the film's cast. Dustin Hoffman, originally selected for the role of Ratso based on his performance in an off-Broadway show called A, in 1965, contributed to the movie's ensemble. Everybody's Talkin', initially a placeholder song during editing, became a permanent fixture in the final cut. Fred Neal, the song's composer, penned it as a last-minute addition to his album in 1966, unintentionally shaping the film soundtrack. During the movie's 25th anniversary, Dustin Hoffman talked about a scene in the film where people in the audience started leaving. He mentioned that filming a particular scene was uncomfortable, especially the one where a character experiences something awful. Jennifer Salt, another actor in the film, shared her feelings of being ignored and embarrassed during that scene. She said it was hard to do without any support. You know the scene where someone says, I'm walking here? Well, that became famous and was even redone in a music video later on. These stories show how tough it was for the actors during some parts of the filming. It gives us a better understanding of what happened behind the scenes and how certain scenes affected the actors. In the movie, various other films such as A Smell of Honey, A Swallow of Brine, and Candidate for Murder are showcased on theater marquees. Dustin Hoffman, known for his roles in Beckett, Pinter, and Breck Productions, demonstrated his versatility by portraying Razzo Rizzo in Midnight Cowboy, the 121-year-old character in Little Big Man, and the autistic Raymond in Rain Man George Epperson, who portrays the cafeteria dishwasher, was recruited in Miami, Florida, and transported to Texas for filming. The iconic line, I'm walking here, I'm walking here, from the movie was voted as the 27th best movie quote by the American Film Institute. When the director wanted to adapt the Midnight Cowboy novel, MGM, with first refusal rights, showed interest. However, their suggestions of casting Elvis Presley and Sammy Davis Jr. for the lead roles were met with his horror. The track Midnight Cowboy on Faith, No More's Angel Dust album recreates the John Barry instrumental from the film, transitioning from the original sound to a rock style and back again. In 1969, Sylvia Miles earned an Oscar nomination for Best Actress in a Supporting Role, standing out among the nominees from Best Picture contenders. Despite acclaim, the film faced disappointment at the 1969 Berlin Film Festival, leading the distributor United Artists to boycott the event for the next decade. Dustin Hoffman's portrayal of Razzo Rizzo in the acclaimed film is hailed as one of the greatest performances of all time, ranking seven on Premier Magazine's list in 2006. Hoffman's immersive portrayal captivated audiences and critics alike, solidifying his status as a powerhouse in the industry. In the process of making the movie, something interesting happened with the screenwriter's name. When they were filming in Texas, the director and lead actor had a moment of uncertainty. But the lead actor noticed the director's worry and reassured him about the movie's potential effect on their careers. The movie's beginning scenes were shot in Big Spring, Texas, showing a billboard for Eddie Chili's Western Company of North America. This billboard reflected the culture of the late 1960s and 1970s in the southwestern United States. In the realm of American cinema, there's a figure who has left an unforgettable imprint on the big screen. 
With roles in several iconic movies, this individual has solidified their place in cinematic history. One notable film, ranked among the top 100 greatest American movies, stands out for its raw depiction of life. Initially positioned at number 36, its timeless significance has persisted, even if it slid slightly to number 43 on a subsequent list. In the opening scenes of this movie, the protagonist carries a swinging suitcase symbolizing their journey. Interestingly, these close-up shots were filmed later in New Jersey, adding depth to the character's odyssey. Crafting a narrative that transcends time, this film continues to captivate audiences globally, with its themes and characters leaving an unmistakable mark on the fabric of cinema history. Amidst the complexities of filmmaking, challenges arose for the team behind a notable movie. Ruth Gordon, a celebrated actress, encountered a scheduling conflict, leading her to decline a role in the film. Despite this hurdle, the director drew inspiration from various sources, including a Yugoslavian film and an Andy Warhol creation, to shape the movie's distinct visual style. A pivotal figure in the film's success was a prolific actor known for his diverse roles. His portrayal of Razzo Rizzo alongside another actor's character earned critical acclaim and contributed significantly to the movie's cultural significance. Interestingly, this actor's involvement extended beyond this particular movie. He starred in several other films recognized for their enduring influence on cinema. In conclusion, despite facing obstacles, the creative team managed to deliver a groundbreaking cinematic experience that continues to captivate audiences. Director John Schlesinger acknowledged that certain aspects of the film could have been altered, notably the lengthy party scene. However, he believed he effectively conveyed compassion rather than despair, capturing the blend of desperation and humor on 42nd Street. Dustin Hoffman immersed himself in New York City's slums, studying the gestures and mannerisms of tramps and street dwellers to authentically portray his character. Towards the end, Joe and Townie stroll past New York City's colony records, marking a subtle moment in the narrative's backdrop. In crafting the scenes for Midnight Cowboy, the filmmakers ingeniously repurposed elements from a soon-to-be-demolished tenement building to create the authentic ambience of Ratso and Joe Buck's apartment. This resourcefulness breathed life into the set, immersing viewers into the gritty reality of urban New York. Jennifer Salt, portraying Joe's former flame Crazy Annie, brought a personal touch to the film, being the daughter of the screenplay's creator, Waldo Salutin and her connections extended beyond the screen, as her Malibu cottage became a hub for influential figures in the film industry, catalyzing collaborations that shaped 1970s cinema trends. In a blink, and you'll miss it moment, Sandy Duncan graces the screen, not as a character, but as a fleeting image on a television set. This subtle inclusion adds depth to the film's immersive world, capturing the essence of everyday life amidst the protagonist's tumultuous journey.